We're working with a group of young people from Springwell Dean Special School. These young people are already part of a forest school group and we're using these guys, or working with these guys, to develop a, a woodland sculpture trail. They're going to be working with a lot of sharp tools, um, chisels, saws, knives, a lot of things that they haven't used before. So the children actually worked out what their own risks were. They teach us how to use knives, the Laplander saw, this carving, like all the carving tools and chisels and sensible, like you've got to chisel away from you and stuff. Like with the wood, when you're chiseling, there's like grain in the wood and you've got to chisel with the grain or you'll crack the wood. Using the woods as a classroom, it's ideal. Um, who wouldn't want to be out in the woods, you know, as a young lad? We're getting, like, pieces of wood. We're finding them, like, what's either being felled or, like, just fell over of old age. We're getting them, we're bringing them back, and then we're just carving into them and, like, making them... Like, when you look at the piece of wood, you didn't you think, oh, it's just a piece of wood, but when, like, you finish carving, it looks actually really good. In order to develop a sculpture, uh, the young people worked with the artist. They looked at the wood to try and to have a bit of a vision to see what they could actually do with the piece of wood. By looking at the, like I say, the shape of the wood, they came up with an idea or design. And just simply with a pencil, they looked at the the shape of the wood and which areas they had to take uh, to cut away. They worked in sections. They would take a small piece away and then look at how the how the uh, how the wood was shaping up as a as a woodland sculpture. I would say in the first year, the guys from ten o'clock all the way through till two never stopped. And you know we've got some excellent projects there. You know, L fist hand, uh, a, a two a double headed snake, absolutely brilliant. So that, that'll be like the morning activity. Then I'll get either one or two students to help me prepare our dinner, which is always something like a, a lamb hot pot because of the, the weather. It's quite cold, you know. Remember, we're in the first week in December, right? And the guys are still still out there working. Like, when you think, oh, carving, it's going to be easy, but it's actually not. It's kind of hard. And how are you finding it? Difficult. We've got kids that wouldn't normally mix together in school, but out there they work together. So the, the activities we're doing, you know, when children that they've got to work in pairs, you know, so they're speaking to each other. There's a bit of teamwork going on. They get, you know, they're being in an environment that they, they wouldn't usually be in. The pressure's sort of taken off them academically. Okay, so now we kind of want to round over this. I think the artist worked really, really well with the young people. He was very patient, uh, but also the young people were very patient and it was explained to them that it wasn't going to happen straight away. It was going to take quite a bit of development. Initially they were saying it was just a piece of wood, but slowly it was a piece of wood that turned into a piece of art. The realisation of... Oh, look, you can see the hand forming or you could see the L forming was absolutely brilliant, you know, and you could see, and it all happened in the space of, I would say, of about three hours. As we got to, like, the, the final hour of the day, they were really start to realise, you know, it wasn't a piece of wood anymore, it was a fantastic sculpture, you know. Basically, out of, like, chisel and mark sculptures. Uh, what about... The patience required to do oh, what you're doing. Oh, you've got to have patience. Because, it, like, at the moment you think, oh, it looks crap, it's not going to be now, but when it's finished it'll look any good. Just get on with things and realise that the, they don't have to give up at the first hurdle. And that way they build that, that resilience up and they can take that back into the classroom when they're, when they're working on their academic subjects easier you can like think because you've got air to breathe and stuff like that in a classroom it's, just, it's like boring and out there you can still do work and you're still learning but you're having fun as well I'd say they're, they're developing their own skills but they're developing their own personalities and they've got the freedom to express themselves um, through developing and creating some great woodland sculptures that's a really good start you can see
And, you know, it's getting them skills that they've learnt out, out here to transfer them back into the classroom, you know, where they'll, hopefully they'll find a massive improvement. Like, we used to just think, oh, it's only a tree, and there's a little day now, but now, like, we've came on this course, it's like, you notice, like, oh, a tree's like a human. They live, you hurt them, like, you hurt yourself, basically. No, you can use it as a renewable resource and, and get enjoyment from it and learn from it. I think we should like bring our math book out and do our work out here. Might go on the fire, like, but you know. <laughs>